Uh, obviously, Tulsa played really well today. We give them a lot of credit. Um, they, uh, their small lineup is a t it's just a tough matchup for us. And uh, we had to make sure. We were searching for different ways to play defense. None of them were working, obviously, until we went with Trey Scott at the uh, – Really, when we went small, we just played no center. We had to go to a no center lineup to be able to stop them the way they were making shots. So give their guys credit. But uh, that's what Trey was recruited for. So, you know, situation, you got to have different guys on your roster so you can play situational basketball, especially against spread. You know, nowadays there's a lot of teams that go small. There's a lot of teams that spread you out. Um, and try to make the three-point shot their, their weapon and use their quickness, excuse me, to beat you off the dribble. Uh, and when that happens, you have to have some guys on your roster to be able to make an adjustment and play small defensively. And, uh, you know, last two games, Trey has been our leading rebounder as well. So uh, that was finally the defense that, defensive move that worked uh, against Tulsa. And, um, Give him a lot of credit. He did a good job. And obviously, Gary, we, once we were able to start getting Gary Clark the ball, um, we stopped having to live at the three-point line. That was, uh, you know, I thought that was big as well. Because, you know, again, they're small, so you got to be able to get him, get him going, you know, in, in, in deep, especially with Kyle on the bench. No, I said what I see is that we're 25 and 4 and 14 and 2. In the last two years, we've won 55 games. I don't know what people expect. I'm just, I'm just answering you. I'm allowed to answer you however I want. I'm going to give you a stat. Kentucky, Indiana, and Louisville this year combined for 32 losses. Tell me how long it's taken us to lose 32 games. Tell me how many years combined. It, You'd have to go back for us to lose 32 games. So, you know, we're not perfect. We're far from perfect. And if you look around at what's going on, then people ought to be real happy at Cincinnati with the way the basketball program is being run. Next question. You talked about Gary being pretty heavy in the game against Tulsa. Part of it is a defensive program, but also having Gary there. What a good example of what you need to do from a individual perspective? Well, they're, again, they're small and uh, – we finally were able to get him the ball and uh, get him going. But like I told him in the locker room, you know, players win games. And he's got he's to be assertive at all times. But uh, he's a great player. But I, I would say this, you know, because I don't want you – I say he, he's one of the guys, okay. There, there's a lot of good players in this league. And, I, you know, so I'm not one of those guys, my guy should be player, you know. Gary's a great player. Obviously, I'm partial to my guy, but uh, there's been some guys have great years in our conference, notably Rob Gray and some other guys. So um, I respect all the kids that are – there's some really good players in our league. Gary's been a little bit of a team selfish guy since he got up today. Has he been putting in extra work? Yeah, I thought uh, – I had a meeting with the staff Friday uh, early, and um, we talked about everything, each guy, what they needed to do as a shooter to shoot the ball better. And it's going to start happening, period. It's not, it's not arbitrary. So um, you want to make shots, you got to get your feet apart, you got to get lift, you got to get your hips down, your hips back, and your head forward. Stand up, shoot 22 footers. See, there was a time in basketball, and you, and you, you know, you watch ESPN Classic, nobody even shot the ball from where the current three point line is, really back when you were in your prime. But, uh, you know, so those, I mean, those are, those, if you're going to shoot the ball with range, you have to shoot the ball through your legs. All you got to do is watch Steph Curry and Klay Thompson, you know, and watch them. You know, today's kids, you know, they all want to shoot it out there. Well, then there's fundamentals. If you're going to shoot it out there, you're, you're going to shoot it, you're going to get your feet apart so you can get your hips down and so you can get, get some lift on your shot. If you don't, if you get your, if your feet are together and your hips don't get down, then, then you're going to be short. We've had a lot of guys shooting line drives because of that. We've been sloppy with our fundamentals. There's a reason the ball goes in. If you shoot the ball the right way all the time and you're committed to that, 
And at our, 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 in our program, you know, and we got good kids because they look at them. They made the adjustment. You know, and it's my job to make sure that my staff and when we go to do shooting stuff that, that, that it's getting done the way it needs to be taught the right way. It's no different than a blocking technique. It might work two out of ten times and you have bad technique. You got to have the right technique, the proper technique at anything to do it well, to do it well consistently. So, you know, guys worked hard at it Friday and Saturday. We, each guy, Jaron, all we watch film. Each shooter had to watch film of, them, of their, sh their makes and misses. Um, you know, we put a lot of time in on trying to do it and tr trying to get, to get these guys to become better players. So, they were, you know, I give, give those guys credit. Well, what I would say is um, I'm happy with 26 assists, and you're right. No coach is going to be ha happy with 14 turnovers. Um, what you'll find is this is where assist, you know, these totals can be misleading. When teams play zone, your assist totals will always be higher because there's less dribbling, there's more passing. If teams play a lot of man and mug you, like when we were at Houston, and you, you can't make a pass, and you can't even get open or you can't even post up because you're being mugged, uh, then it's, it's hard to have an assist. Those games, it's really it's hard to make an assist. So that's why, you know, I won't get too, too excited. You know, I know why the assist totals are high and low. For us, we need to be able to make assists when a team's climbing into us and trying to take us out of our offense playing man-to-man. -man. But you're still happy, you know, we got guys that, are unselfish, but uh, it's a lot easier to pass the ball in zone offense because you're not dribbling. Coach, what was your perspective of the Trey Scott block slash foul? What do you think? Did you watch me? I, I did, but I was wondering what did the officials say? Maybe they think I'm missing He missed the call. He apologized, which doesn't help me. Doesn't help me. I don't get to apologize when we lose and our fans are upset with me. I don't need that. Doesn't help me. I will say that, Gress. You know, when my dad was young, he and my mom had this little trophy. I said, what was it? And he was bragging that they won this dance contest down at Moonlight Gardens, <laughs> old Coney Island. Yeah. You ever getting one of those? <laughs> See, back, back in the 60s, everybody could dance. But to win that contest, you got to be able to dance to every song that comes on. So if you're going to make a run, you can't just win one way. So yes is the answer to your question. I mean, you, you, you know, you're going to run into some games where a team gets hot and you got to be able to score with them. You're not going to be able to just shut everybody out. That's why, Jux, I, I, I talk about, you know, it's not our defense sometimes. The other team's making shots. It's not, it's not our defense. So I, that's all I meant by it. it, it you know, it's, it's the other team's practice too. <laughs> they, they, they get scholarships as well. You know, they, they, they're trying. You know, and they had a game plan. It was we knew what it was going to be. Uh, it was the right game plan. Frank's a good coach. They've won six in a row. They're probably going to be the four seed in the in the, in the tournament. So, uh, but yeah, you you got to be able to win different ways if you're going to make a run. You have to. But that being said, we got some guys that you know. I'll leave you guys with this. We have got to be, if we're going to take the next step as a team. Gar Gary has got to take control of his team. Um, and he's got to raise guys to – he's got to set the standard because he's a guy that can play well. He plays well on both ends. And he's got to, he's got to hold Kyle accountable defensively. See, you're never going to be great if a guy only defends because the coach is going to take him out or yell at him. I don't, you know, I don't think that uh, the Golden State Warriors are worried about Steve Kerr yelling at him. What I think is that – they rotate defensively because they're worried about Draymond Green yelling at them. See, I think, you know, great teams have internal pressure. Great, great teams hold each other accountable. And these are the things that separate, you know, when you get to the top and there's a lot of, you know. And it's, we're, gonna, we're trying to prepare the guys to play in a one-and-out tournament. Where, you're, I mean, it's over. One game's over. So it can't be okay to just let guys – we, we check you into the game, and the first thing you do is lose your man and give up a three. 
you got to be fearful that when you come back to the bench, your teammates are going to be on you, not the coach. And that, that, to me, that's what separates the great teams, if you look around pro sports. So, you know, I, that's, that's what I believe. Thanks, guys. Yeah, questions when you're ready? Hey, this team, Mel Hawks, so did you guys. When you fell behind eight, you I think we just stayed together. Uh, it took us a while to create separation between the two of the teams. In terms of score, I mean, they played ex they played exceptionally well. They were making shots, but we knew that coming in. Uh, I think we have to be more accountable, especially myself, just playing defense and just being aware of all our uh, all our assignments and just being ready. But I think we showed resilience today, so I'm proud of our team as a as a whole. Agree with Kyle. You know, uh, early on they hit some threes, and you t let a team get in rhythm and get comfortable like that. You know, the three becomes the equalizer in the game. Uh, and then we had a lot of turnovers early. So, you know, we had to stay together and hold each other accountable from this. And we got to keep doing that for the last two road games, especially. How frustrating is it sitting over there for 12 minutes with two fouls on your senior day? And were you able to kind of see some areas where you were able to pick them apart in the second half? Um, you know, it's frustrating, but, you know, with the, the group of guys we got, they were they were kind of they were holding it down while I was sitting down. But, you know, second half, it was just, you know, you, you saw at first half that they weren't really trapping and, you know, just getting stops defensively. That's where, it's, where we, you know, separated. We kept getting steals. You know, Trey came in, blocked some shots, and we went the other way for Kane getting layups and Jacob and Jaren, you know, shooting threes. Oh, yeah, for sure. You know, uh, Jacob, Jaron, and Kane, you know, when we have that extra offensive punch, it gives us a different uh, – it gives a different perspective for everybody, but it also gives us a different level. You know, I think great teams have different levels and, and different ways to win. So if we can continue to develop that and continue to show that we can win in different ways because, you know, obviously coach isn't happy with 74 points, and we're not happy with 74 points, and we want to do better. So, uh, you know, we're going to focus on what we have to do to get better on the defensive end of the ball, but we want to keep on growing those uh, offensive – that offensive potency. It was a combination of a lot, but you know, taking care of the ball is a huge. That's one that's one possession where we don't get a chance to get a rebound or score. So, you know, it just it just, you know, takes the life out of you, especially when teams getting rebounds as well, getting second opportunities and we're not even getting a shot up. And, you know, once we start taking care of the ball in the second half and, you know, able to rebound and, you know, just get out there defensively, that's where we, we kinda start pulling away. Uh, I've been telling you guys a lot uh, over the years, but I think Gary and I have been through a lot on and off the court. I don't think we ever count, our, count each other out. I don't think we ever count our team out. And I think that's a mindset that you develop over time in life. And I think that's a, a great message for anybody that wants to listen. Because uh, even though we could be down 20, honestly, to tell you the truth, and we still think have a, we have a chance to win. So, I mean, we obviously won't want to put ourselves in that position. but. It's the same thing in life. You might take a few bumps and bruises, but if you're willing to keep on working and keep on fighting, I think you'll come out and prevail at the end. So I think that's our mindset, and I think that's the rest of our team mindset. I think I think I was just trying to uh, uh, approach it as a regular game. You know, there was a lot of festivities and a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of uh, they were showing us a lot of love today, so I think it was cool. I think uh, and I appreciate it. I know Gary appreciates it. And, you know, I've appreciated the Cincinnati fans and and all of y'all the whole time, the whole three years I've been here. So I think I've been gracious, and I uh, I'm gonna continue to be who I am. Same, you know it <laughs> it was a uh, it, it was a, a moment where it finally I think it kind of was starting to approach me that this was my last time playing in front of. You know, all our fans at home. And, you know, you don't, it, it, I don't think about it leading up until today because uh, we'll have a good crowd. But today, 
it was it was special, you know, for me to be to spend all my four years here and to you know enjoy the atmosphere of our fans. It, it was it was pretty cool. You know, it, it's funny because of all the stories we tell, how I, I first saw him mm -hmm. at NC State and, you know, me recruiting him and me on, we're building a relationship through recruiting and then he comes here and then we're, we're, we're polar opposite mm -hmm. on the court. But, you know, just to go out with a, a guy like this, it, it's special because, you know, like, dang, bro, I kept looking, I'm like, this is it right here. Like, mm -hmm. It's the last home game here where we can wear white uniforms and be in front of our student body. Fans. Uh, huh? We never. Gary and I never played each other pickup at NC State. We saw each other once at camp, and I was like, "Who's this six eight three man with a size eighteen shoe and it, with meat cleavers on the end of his wrist?" So I was like, "I, I thought he was gonna be a good player. I got a chance to see him play in the uh, league camp at State, but we never played each other." Uh, but, you know, when I decided to transfer, I, I thought he was going to be a great player, and he developed to be a great player. I mean, look what he's done at, at this university. It's amazing. So I'm happy I'm happy to be a part of that, and I'm happy to be with him. Like we said, we're, we're different in a lot of different ways, but we have the same mindset when it comes to life overall. So we, we, we're a great uh, team. <laughs> Honestly, you know, people may not believe me, but that moment where I I mess up and I purposely don't look at coach. <laughs> <laughs> and he's over there just throwing a fit because he's trying to get my attention. I purposely don't look at him. I'll probably miss that because I'm like, what if I would have looked at him? Like, what is what is he doing right now? But that's probably it. Oh, you, you want my answer? Yeah, yeah, please go. Okay. Uh, uh, I think the I think the fans, cause and just the exhilaration of making a great play, or whether it be on defense or offense. You know, you live for stuff like that. I know when I was a little kid, I used to watch college basketball every Sunday, every every chance I could, and just I would be like, I can't wait to be in that position where I'm on a team, a great team, and you know. The, the fact that God has been able to grant that for me in my life, I'm, I'm extremely, extremely uh, uh, grateful for that. So it's just, that's a beautiful feeling. And Gary's answer too, that's a great answer.